Today I'm up potting some of my cabbages. You can see they've got, got to be, this one's really tall, but I'm gonna put them in a bigger pot. I like this little thing that I've been using last year and this year because you can push on the bottom so you can kind of easily push out, pop out the, the soil. And you can see on the bottom, see some of the roots poking through there. I'm about to turn that one over. So we're just gonna put them, put them down in the next little pot. I might add a little bit of dirt on top. And then this one can continue growing in this pot until it gets big enough for me to plant in the garden.
is I'm still not leaving them out overnight, but I have been moving them out here during the day when the sun's shining. And you can see on these, if you can see right there, the next little leaf is beginning to, beginning to grow. So another couple of weeks and I should be able to put them out in the garden. Yellow bells are in full bloom, better known as forsythia, but we call them yellow bells. They are a real sign of spring. So it was worth climbing down the bank. Look how many beautiful daffodils I was able to get from down there. So I think I'm gonna put some of them in this. I'm gonna to have to do some trimming, but I'm gonna put, put some in this old vase that used to be my Granny Gazzy's. I think it was actually like a, uh, more like a candle holder than a vase, but it'll work. It'll work. Look how pretty it's gonna be. And they smell wonderful. So my house is gonna smell like the wonderful spring flowers now. All of them are the same, except I did have one of the double ones blooming. They just kind of look all ruffledy. Maybe I can put him in the middle somehow. I didn't see any. That one's kind of got some dirt on it. I didn't see any hyacinths out there or I could have got some of them to add some color. But this is just the first of the daffodils. They'll continue to continue to bloom in the coming days. That's cute. Yeah, I like that better. Me too. Tomorrow's Granny's birthday, but since it's on Monday and everybody's late getting in from work and all that kind of stuff, we're gonna have her cake today, this afternoon. So I've made the cake. Um, truthfully, birthday cakes are not my favorite. I would much prefer something else, but Granny loves them. So I've used her recipe for the icing and We've put Granny on it. We've got, uh, she'll be 83, so we've got our candles here. She, it's funny, she actually bought the candles. That's how much she likes birthday cakes. She makes sure that she goes all out, even for herself. So that looks nice, Katie. I love downtown Pizza. Yeah. 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 I used your recipe for the icing. Yeah, it's pretty good. You want to cut me a piece? Well, first we're going to make you blow out the candles. Oh, yeah. Got to make a wish. You get on the road, you get anxious to get home. I know how that is. How about you? I'm going up there and I look down right there and they be fine. You didn't need a ticket for that. I just got a second. I look down and I'm going 85 and 70. All right, y'all going to come sing happy birthday? Yes. Good birthday, Kate. Well, look at the flowers, too. Good. Up here, yeah. I did the icing. Mary gets a picture too. Yeah. 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 Alright, Katie, you want to lead us with happy no. birthday? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you ready, Granny? Should have turned it around. Like no, that's no, okay. That's okay. You, now it says 38. Just look I see like what you're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see what this is about. Well, that's young. Yeah. 38. Yeah. Okay. okay. Ready? Yeah. yeah. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Well, you <laughs> don't cry. Well, the kids. I wish. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I got them both. Yeah. One swoop. Where's the knife? Uh, I've got it right there. <laughs> well, ready. Ready. Yes, oh, right. Time. Let's have cake. Ready. What, what, what part you want, Danny? Huh? What That's part right. you want? Just you want the Y? Just in here. Bum, 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 Save this little piece. So I come down to see what Katie was doing today, see what was on her bench. This is her, what she calls her bench. I guess that's what it is, huh? <laughs> yeah. Because that's what most jewelers call it. So I always like to come down here and take a peek at all the little, she lays out, you can see all the, all the projects that she's working on currently. She kind of um, has her own system of doing stuff as most people do. So I, I think like I would finish one all the way, but Katie kind of does it in steps, which makes sense, I guess, it would, depending on what tool you're having to use. This will be a necklace. I'm gonna use that as the center and make little petals that come around it in a little stem for a flower. Ooh. I saw that little garnet sand that I pick up from mm -hmm. the river and I have epoxied it through the back so then you can see it. See through it, yeah. And you can see cool. the little garnets on the back. 13, 14, 15. So there'd been like 15 solder joints in this. Mm, nice. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah.
birthday time. Mom, well, I got a big <laughs> We just had really great supper. We had some cube steak, we had green beans and rice and garlic bread. Very good, wasn't it? It was good, thank you. So tomorrow is Matt's birthday, May 1st. He's gonna be 89. Well, if you well, can look at his now, cake, <laughs> if you look at his cake, it's got 60 on it. So he's like, why have you got 60 on my cake? He's not gonna be 60. Granny made his cake, made his holy smoke cake for him. And she gave me those because she thought it would be funny. She said, "Put the 60 on Matt's cake, and you'll get he'll get a good laugh out of that." Tell him I thought he was 60. Of course, she knows he's not. So that was Granny. She sent the sent the 60 for you. Okay, these are going to be our our experimental ones. Matt, I said, "How am I going to know which way I'm going?" He said, "Well, you just draw an arrow." So he helped me with that. So on this side, we're just, we don't have very many of these, but we're gonna plant this little, the one I was said, it's almost, and Matt said the same thing. We could call it the paint bean. Looks like a paint horse. It's mystery Cherokee bean. So we're gonna, I saved a few of them just in case something happens to these. We're gonna plant those on this side. And then on going this way, we're gonna plant the uh, let's see, what have I done with it? Oh, there it is. So I've already lost it. The case knife ones. So these she got from, let's see her little note, uh, Johnny Shields. And he was born and raised in Nantahala. I met Johnny. He's very nice. He grows them as we do. Case knife bean. Heavy yield. Big, long string runner bean. That sounds like what Matt likes. Mm -hmm. And that's what they look like. That's a pretty bean. This one looks like you could let grow and use for a dried bean too. I mean, you could use any bean for a dried bean if you wanted to, but that's what that reminds me of. So we're gonna plant them going that way. A piece of old Appalachian folklore is that if you press in with your boot, leave your footprint on the beans, they'll grow better. So I have great memories of seeing Pap's boot prints. He didn't necessarily believe that, but he did do it. And then now I'm seeing Matt's.
always get steam burnt doing this.
you gonna make out of those? Well, these are gonna be like uh, dry. They're dried beans, so like our pinto beans we normally buy from the store. Yeah. And you just have them like this this time. And then you cook when you want to cook beans, like you reconstitute them and dry. Yeah. Cool. Could you save these seeds? Yeah, you could save them the seeds too. If you want yeah, to. some people do that. They dry them out like that just to save the seed. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Come out to get in my car and found this little Katie did here perched on the side of it. It's moving slow. Katie dids are over for this year. This one's just still trying to hang on a little bit longer. I've had some beef stew cooking in the crock pot all day. I only seasoned it with salt and pepper and garlic, and I put a little bit of Worcestershire sauce in it, and that was all. That's just juice that's come out of the meat. Normally when I make beef stew like this, I add potatoes, sometimes carrots and onions, but always potatoes, and we eat it with cornbread. Today I'm doing something different. I've had this in there cooking, it's done. I'm gonna make some rice and I'm gonna roast some vegetables and we're gonna have the meat and the vegetables over rice. Look at these beautiful, beautiful flowers. Cold weather has moved into our area. It's a little airish out here right now, but it's gonna get really cold tonight and the following nights this week, we're gonna be down in the 20s. So it'll be the first real hard freeze that we've had. Corey went down to visit with Granny a while today and Granny wanted to go out in the yard and she wanted to get her some flowers before the, the cold gets them. And Corey helped her and they made this beautiful bouquet and then Corey brought it home to me. Well, it's so thoughtful of Granny and Corey both.
I've got a few Christmas related things I want to get done today. But the first one I need to do is I'm going to wash all these beautiful Christmas dishes. Let me hold up the pattern there so you can see. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that just beautiful? So I'll tell you the story of the Christmas dishes. When Matt and I first met and then we first got married, Miss Cindy, she still lived in Black Mountain, Matt's mother. And so when she come to visit, of course, she'd stay a few days and she often come at Christmas. Well, probably her first Christmas, she realized, man, Tipper really loves Christmas because I would just go all out decorating. Uh, maybe put up more than one tree. I have some little trees and, of course, our big tree and setting it, you know, all my little Christmas goodies along the dressers and in the kitchen and in the living room. So not long after that, she got me and Matt for Christmas one year, this beautiful, beautiful set of dishes. It comes with, there's plates, there's, you know, I guess this is a salad plate, there's the saucer, there's um, the coffee cups, it even comes with the sugar and the creamer, and you can see over here the teapot. Then it has these adorable, adorable, smaller little cups and smaller little saucers. It has a big bowl, like the bowls in there, a big platter. It's really, really beautiful. I don't have, my cabinet space won't allow me just to put this in the cabinet, you know, all these dishes along with the dishes that we use every day. So I have it stored under, you know, in my cabinets way back in the back. And that means that it's a hassle to get it out. So, of course, the first few years after she bought it, I got it out every year and, you know, have to wash it all, put my other dishes back under there. It's a whole process, you know, you get the, get what I'm saying. And then after that, I would just do it every few years, whenever I, it was a year that I had some extra time and I thought, I really want to get those dishes out. I've not got them out probably at least in two years, maybe even three years. It's been a while. But this year, once we lost Miss Cindy in June, I don't know, it wasn't right then, but not long after that, I thought about the dishes and I thought, well, I know this year I'm going to drag all those dishes out and we're going to use them, and we're going to enjoy them. And I'm going to get them out at the 1st of December and I'm going to enjoy them all the way through the month um, before I have to put them back up just because I know that, that she would really love it. She always loved it on the years that I did get them out and she was here and we eat, you know, eat off of them, eat our Christmas Eve supper uh, off of them. She was always here for Christmas Eve, and she just loved seeing them, and she'd always tell me how pretty they were. It's really special that Miss Cindy bought them, just because it's a nice gift, but if you knew Miss Cindy, you would think it's even more special. She was not someone that, that did stuff like this. She didn't decorate. She didn't decorate for Christmas. She didn't uh, she was very utilitarian, so she would never have had two sets of dishes so that she had to swap them out. That's, she just would have never <laughs> been one to do that. So it's really special that she knew that um, how much I loved Christmas, and she knew I was somebody that would do that and that I would enjoy them. Really meaningful, and I'm sure they will be uh, even after I'm gone for Corey and Katie. And, of course, they know the story of Miss Cindy buying them.